Hello everyone and welcome to Gets a Palooza. Today I'm going to do something a little out of the ordinary and um, kind of do a little how-to video. It's very short. It's not fungi. It's just um, uh, pinning related. I've done a lot of pinning in my life uh, over the last 25 years or more of gaming and and thought I would... Um, I, I kind of had a neat idea that works out sometimes when you're uh, when it's hard to do normal pinning so I thought I'd share it with you um, working on the uh, bakamono companions to my dog list so hopefully uh, you've seen the battle report I think there's one or two out now that have the dogs and I think I've got that list refined as an alpha dog list with the alphas theme and the oni and slaves and the dogs and it works pretty well and it's effective and it's fun so i was trying to come up with uh, again i'm always looking for something interesting for the channel for you guys to see without me having to buy entire second factions um and uh, add tons of painting and everything and so what i came up with with the help of my friend friend uh, ben resolve is a bakamono list to go with the dogs. So the dogs are 40 and the Bakamono here are uh, 60 or approximately. It's 58 points. So now I can either choose a Thousand Eyes themed Bakamono list or I can do an Alpha Oni list along with the dogs and I don't have to paint that many figures but I get to do some interesting ones. So what I'll have are two Bakamono Spearmen here two Bakamono beaters, and then some interesting figures. I've got Track, and here it's Suna and Trepeng. So uh, I'm doing the bases a little differently. I had these, uh, these are 30 mil bases with these rock formed ruined temple things on them. So I thought that it helped elevate the Bakamono a little bit, make them a, uh, just a little more dynamic given how diminutive they are. Um, I just started painting them. All I did was do a dark gray um, primer and then a light gray primer from straight down and then a white dry brush and a black wash. And really that's all there is to it. Now I am going to make these look a little more uh, appropriate to go with the dog bases, which are made to go with the Oni bases, which is supposed to be a ruined temple. So... I will be doing some painting touch-ups and adding some appropriate foliage so they won't look they while they will look different than the dog bases they will look consistent which is what I'm after with the basing. So so this is all just background let me get to what I actually want to talk to you about. So you guys know if you've been in Bushido you know for a while that the the models are um, the the older models, while they look really cool, are not. Many of them are not very user friendly. In other words, they're very hard to put together. They've got ball sockets, which give you unlimited potential for posing. However, it means they're almost impossible to. Once they're glued in, they get knocked out really easy, and then you know you you go through this endless process of parts falling off in the middle of games. And if you can find them you can put them back on, but I, I've already got a bunch of models that are missing parts that will never see them again because they're just gone. So the option, really the only option for dealing with this is pinning. And uh, however, pinning, like pinning heads to bodies is easy. Pinning these little arms and things and various extraneous bits to a model is really tough. But I do have an idea. Um, I didn't actually concoct this for Bakamono. I came up with this for 40K figures, but it works just as well. Um, and it's good for dealing with things that are uh, really tiny and, and, and tough to deal with. So I'm going to show you this Bakamono right here, and I'm hoping that this will focus. So this is a Bakamono Spearman. He has got, and it's hard to see because it's all metal, but basically here's his spear arm. It is not pinned, but it is glued on at the moment. And so I've got him glued into the socket. And also it's very helpful with things like this. If you can find a second attachment point, a point to put glue. And if you can see, 
his floppy ear is right here, and I've got his arm pushed up against the ear. So that gives me a second attachment point. So I've got a glue point here and a glue point up here. That makes it much stronger. Now, what I did is after the glue was in and after it's set, I took a toothpick with a little extra super glue on it. And I should mention that I use, I use Jet. There's only one place in Madison I can get it. It's a, that I'm aware of. And then I use the zip kicker. Um, we used to be, I used to be able to get non-aerosol, you know, where it was just a squeeze bottle, but you can't do that anymore. So the super jet for me, the normal super jet, not the thick stuff, um, works really, really well and is very reliable and easy to control. Anyway, let's go back to our little bakamono. So once I got it glued in initially, then I went in with a toothpick full of extra super glue, just put a little bit on the tip of the pick, and then I went around the edges of the arm and just added a little bit of glue around here to build up a nice layer. Number one, it fills the gap because there was a gap. I didn't use so much glue initially. And so that not only fills the gap and makes it stronger, but it fills the gap and makes more of a blend between where the arm is and where the rest of the figure is. You'll notice though that right in the middle of the arm, there's a hole. And the reason that hole is there is because that is where the pin is going to go. Now, there, I could have drilled a hole in the body and then drilled a hole in the arm and tucked a little pin on the inside of the arm and pushed it into the body. But experience says that, that, that those pins tend to be so short that they don't actually do their job. So instead, what I do is I will glue the arm, get it all squared away, let it dry nice and solid. Then I will come back later... And using, uh, and I know you've seen this, if you've seen the, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble getting the camera to focus. My roto tool with a little bit on there, I just went right through the arm from the outside after the glue had dried. And I was able to create, because this is a stable enough glue joint now that all the glue is dry, I went right through the arm and well into the body. And then... I will take my pin, and you can never have too many pins. And the pin, now if you'll excuse me, I'm not sure the, what the camera's going to do here. And I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see anything. There you go. And the pin goes right through the arm, deep into the body. Nope. There we are. There, we're in focus. So that pin goes through the outside of the arm and deep into the body. And what I will do is I will take a flush cutter, which I assume everybody has that's into hobbying. I will glue that pin in place. And then I will cut it flush with the outside of the arm. And I will take a, a little file and I will very gently round the, the end of the pin until it matches the, the curve of the arm. And when that is primed and painted, you will not be able to tell that there was a pin there. And then there is no way on earth that is that arm is coming off because it'll have a, a full contact. I mean, I suppose if you smashed it hard enough, you might be able to get it to spin on the pin, but, but it would take a real effort to get that arm to come off. So there you go. That is my little secret for pinning from the outside. I have done this on multiple figures. Um, if you need structural support, even on a bigger model, you can put more than one pin in, which will absolutely rock solid, lock it into place. And it, it just works out really well. So, so there you go. There's your uh, two cents um, from me on pinning these fiddly little models in order to get them to stay put. Here's the after pick. I don't know how well you can see the uh, the pin, but that's kind of the point. It's right there. You can see the change in color a little bit, the brass against the arm. But in essence, I just filed it down reasonably well. And that will be functionally invisible once it's painted, which is the whole point. And then... There's our, baka, our first Bakamono of the new army, all built and ready to go. I did not pin his on our other arm. I could, 
I just figured uh, because of the way the arm is built and kind of tucked into the body that it was unlikely that it was going to come under enough pressure to actually get knocked off. I may regret that decision, but we'll give it a shot. And here's the final product. My 7 Bakamono, all ready to go. Uh, regular ones in the back, three specials in the front. Uh, Trapang, Hiratsuna, and uh, Track in the front. Uh, of course, the uh, new Bakamono are so much easier to put together. Trapang doesn't actually need to be put together at all, and the other two are, are really simple, so... Uh, there's already been serious progress in getting these models to be more user-friendly. But as a group, I think they look great, and I'm kind of excited. So painting will commence forthwith. Once again, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time on Gitsapalooza.